building instructor presence. Seems to be a common topic these days. People want to build some kind of social or instructor or teacher presence so that the class runs better when you teach online. More effective, more engaging. Uh, students realize there's someone there who cares about them. Let's take a look at this notion of instructor presence and some of the things that you can do in your classes. This is coming to you from Indiana University in Bloomington, where we talk about many things that instructors can do to enhance their classes. Among the things that people can do when they work with their online classes is just personal introductions. Just having a little bit more information about themselves as an instructor. When students know your bio and they know who you are a bit, they get a sense of you know, your, your, your personality the ways in which you teach, your teaching philosophy. Recap events. When you recap and summarize, it also lets them know that you've been following along. You've been reading the post. You've been involved in the discussion. But then again, announce the next steps. So not only what did we do, but where are we going? Email students at critical points. If there's a point in the semester when things are going haywire or where there's a lot due, email them and get them back on track or just update them of what's going on. If you really need to, give them some online office hours and connect with them in a chat or even a phone call. Be specific when you interact with them. You know, use their names. The more you use their names, the more they feel that Dr. So-and-so, teacher so-and-so cares about them. Hold some kind of synchronous event, a chat or a webinar or a Skype event where you talk to them Hello, who are you? Here we go. You know, you hold some kind of a synchronous event where they can kind of sense, feel who you are, see who you are, know that you care. Include personal information that happened to you, things that you've read in the news, conferences that you've attended, events that you've gone to, radio shows that you have done, whatever it is. Include something in the, that, you know, let students connect with, with things that you've accomplished and then they know a bit more about you, but don't overwhelm them at the same time. Contact info. Let them know ways in which they can get a hold of you via email or your office address or even your home address or your mobile phone or whatever, your blog, your Twitter account, whatever you've got. You know, this notion of instructor presence is partly an affective, partly cognitive, get people to interact. It's partly technological in nature and partly organizational. It goes back to these hats that we wear as an online instructor. But there's dimensions or components to instructor presence. Sometimes you become present because you're helping with technology. Sometimes you're present because you're pushing discussion. And it involves many media. There's media that can foster this affective, cognitive, technological, organizational presence. Whether you're using Yak Pack and adding in some kind of voice to the emails that you're sending out to your class, layering your voice within images or documents or videos online with tools like voice threads. I'm just showing you some tools that are out there. These are among many that you might select from. Creating an inquiry community is important. It seems to be one of the, the trends today in online environments. Randy Garrison, Terry Anderson, and Walter Archer have worked on a model of communities of inquiry to get people kind of back to Dewey's age uh, of 100 years ago, thinking about how do we update Dewey to today and get into inquiry with, with teachers providing some teaching kind of presence and social presence that enhance the instructional experience. You're there who's someone who cares about them socially, but also is teaching something, also spurring new discussion. So the community of inquiry model has become important during the past few years to create an educational experience that's rich robust and rewarding. If you don't know about it, read about it. Read other articles. Join, in fact, communities of practice. Go to places like Ning, which has a group on instructor presence in education. If you're interested in instructor presence, join it. Be careful not to post too much personal information or even professional information. Don't overwhelm students, but provide some so they get a sense of who you are. Be careful not to intervene too much, but intervene somewhat. There's an art to any teaching, but especially to teaching online. If you want to be present, uh, if you want students to feel you, if you want students to connect with you, 
you have to be in, but not too much that you're controlling everything. So give some personal hobbies, some interests and so forth, some background, converse uh, with your students. Use a conversational tone. Email them, give them your phone contacts, strategically post. Be the first one in, be the last one in. Find ways in which your presence is enhanced in the discussion. Wrap around three or four different posts online and connect them in a common thread somehow, you see. Be clear when your students can expect to see you or hear from you or read what you've written. When is your presence going to be felt? What time of the week, when in the semester might you be in more often? I just told my students that there's a certain month or week in which I'm going to be gone for a conference, so don't expect me to be in as much as I have been, but I will try. They know this. Send them reminders and announcements. Those reminders and announcements are not only beneficial for getting them on track, it's also beneficial for your sense of presence within the class. Your responsiveness in 12, 24, 48 hours is also part of that. It, it con connotes some caring. It connotes some warmth some emotions and sympathy, empathy on the part of the instructor. These, this notion that you want them to succeed, your warm, inviting tone within the class. If the students are off task, give them a personal note. Send them a little nudge. Ask them if they need some help. And then when students succeed, explicitly note that. Explicitly also note the problems students have faced, complaints you've received, questions that have come up and ways in which you might address them. You might summarize them in a personal blog that you have. You might have a personal homepage for the class. And if you have a homepage, Google Sites is a website that's menu-driven and easy to create a homepage. You might have tech support that also helps you create that homepage. You might create advice systems within you know, some kind of help using screen grabbing technology where you go online, you use Jing or Screener to capture the website or Captivate or some other more advanced tool to create a job aid or help sheet or guide to get students to use something like a wiki for the first time, to get them involved in discussion where they might not have been as much previously. So the Jing website, the Screener website, there are many others you could take a look at. Create a podcast or a video stream that podcast is your personal endorsement within the class of what you see happening and the kinds of topics that you think that they should be reflecting on. When you video stream your lectures, they can see who you are. They get a sense of you out there, okay? It's not just blah, 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 going through a lecture content. So maybe tools like Video Spin or Windows Movie Maker or something else you might find for creating video on the fly. You might use today your mobile phone for that very reason. There's little cameras on these phones. You could actually create a lecture when you're at the beach in Florida or in uh, Aruba or somewhere around the world, whether you're in Korea or China, or wherever you can create your mobile lectures on the go. Integrate technology if you can. Web 2.0 lets students participate, instructors participate and create links, Facebook, MySpace, LinkedIn. Those are all tools that can connect and build social presence with your students. So now you have some insights about social presence. Now you have some awareness of what you might do within your classroom settings. It's time to act on that, create these ways in which your students get to know you better, maybe use some of these social networking technologies for that to happen, maybe have some way in which students can connect with you some weekly things that you do that students connect back with you. There are various ways in which you can provide a sense of who you are socially, what your hobbies are, cognitively, the type of thinking you want to have happen, and you connect these things together, even technologically, you can create some sense that you're there. You're always going to be watching out for them. Good luck in creating social presence in your class.